There's lots of arguments go on about non-duality, just as there's lots of arguments that go on about virtually um, everything, because we tend to have very argumentative minds. And it's even been suggested that there are actually three kinds of non-duality, or if you like, three kinds of oneness. Uh, some time ago, somebody um, contacted me by email and um, asked me a question about this, and I'm going to read the question out now as a way of getting into this um, subject. So this is the question. A book on non-duality that I've read recently says that consciousness exists and that we can become enlightened if we become increasingly aware of consciousness. This seems to be a method that the writer prescribes. You seem to see things differently. You write that there simply is no one and no self. I'm very drawn to your message that there is no method and no right or wrong. I also like it that you say that from the standpoint of liberation, everything is meaningless and without purpose. Would you agree that there are different versions of non-duality out there in the enlightenment marketplace? So yes, of course, there are <laughs> different versions of non-duality out there, just as there are different versions of Christianity, of Islam, of Buddhism, of Marxism, of psychoanalysis. It's the nature of the mind to create division uh, really around um, anything. But this thing about non-duality, um, we can actually make it very simple because if you look at all the various different things that are said, we could say, well, actually, it's uh, as if or it's like there are three different interpretations of um, non-duality. Um, and uh, there's a writer on non-duality, Dennis Waite, who wrote a book in which he summed up these three kinds of um, non-duality or advisor extremely well. Now, Dennis and I profoundly disagree in our interpretation, but nevertheless, I give credit to him uh, for putting the kind of the arguments about non-duality very, very clearly. So um, what Dennis um, suggests is that there is something called traditional non-duality or traditional advaita, which I would say perhaps is most uh, closely aligned to what we might think of as spirituality. And uh, the, the, the idea with um, traditional advaita is that there is some kind of goal to be reached. Let's call that um, enlightenment, if you like, or liberation or a state of no self. And there is a path or maybe many paths by which that state can be reached. So there are methods which will help us along that path. So uh, that's one kind, that's one kind of oneness. Um, and then the second kind of oneness, uh, Dennis Waite calls um, neo advisor. And a simple description of neo advisor is the suggestion that um, there is, if you like, I'm going to use the word goal, although that's not really strictly speaking accurate, but there is, if you like, something that we could call awakening. Uh, I resist the word um, enlightenment. We could perhaps say there is something called liberation, right? But there is no method with which we can reach that. And we could add that at least partly and maybe wholly because it is in fact we who are the problem. So everything that we think we are doing to become liberated is coming from a full sense of self. Uh, liberation can only be seen when that full sense of self falls away and there is nothing that we can do to bring that about. So that's the second kind of oneness or the second kind of non-duality. There is a kind of goal, if you want to think of it like that, but there is no path for reaching that goal. So Dennis calls that um, neo advisor. And then he suggests, and uh, this is completely accurate, there are people very much who um, speak in this way, 
uh, that there is a third kind of non-duality or a third kind of oneness, um, which Dennis calls pseudo advisor. And in pseudo advisor, we could say there is neither a goal, so there is nothing to be realized. Uh, and therefore, obviously, because there is nothing to be <laughs> realized, there is no path to that non-goal, we could say. So we could almost say, or we could say, I think, in pseudo advisor, it's just a question of maybe, you know, getting up one morning and I have my porridge. And while I'm eating my porridge, I look around and I'm still here and the porridge is still there and everything is normal. And I just think to myself, oh, well, I'm enlightened. I always have been enlightened or liberated or uh, whatever word um, I choose to mean. So, you know, to, to, to just to go through that again quickly, um, I hope it doesn't sound too complicated. Uh, what Dennis is suggesting is that um, interpretations of Advaita, there's a traditional Advaita, there's a goal and a path to reach that goal. Uh, pseudo Advaita, there's a goal but no path by which we can reach it. Um, uh, so I think I misspoke there, not pseudo advisor, that's neo advisor. So there's neo advisor where there is a um, goal, but there is no path by which we can reach that goal. And then there is pseudo advisor where there is neither a goal nor a path, of course. And I simply decide, oh, well, you know, there is enlightenment and I've got it, whatever that might mean. Um, yeah, so this accounts for some of the um, arguments, both lighthearted and sometimes very serious arguments that can take place uh, between um, different um, speakers and writers representing different interpretations. Um, there's a note, I wrote about this in one of my books, and I added a note to it which seemed to be uh, relevant, so I'm going to um, finish this short uh, broadcast, this short YouTube video, by adding this um, note here. It's simply a little note about a um, book which I came across. In fact, somebody, the writer, the author, actually... Um, sent it to me or wrote to me about it, asking me if I would um, write a recommendation or an endorsement that could be um, included, published with this book. And I very politely declined. And the reason I declined was because I um, read this description that the author had given. And the author had stated that this book rejects paths and practices but nevertheless, the author went on to promise that the book contained detailed instructions on a practiceless practice. Now, I have absolutely no idea what a practiceless practice might be. It sounds to me, and it sounded then when I was asked for a reference, as it were, <laughs> um, complete gobbledygook. So, um, as I say, I politely declined as I have no idea whatsoever what I could possibly say about a practice, this practice, or what that might be. So we could say that as with Advaita, as with all religions, there's, you know, there's no end to the kind of sophisticated madness that our mischievous monkey minds can produce when we're thinking about it, writing about it, talking about it and discussing it with others. So I'll leave you with that. Uh, if any of you uh, are able to come up with a um, definition or a description of a practice, this practice, which makes any sense whatsoever to you, I'd probably be quite grateful if you, you could leave it um, as a comment on this video. And if I think it makes sense, which I have to say is very unlikely, but if I think it makes sense, I will post that comment under this video.